All right, I'm John Power, and you're watching the Redman TV. Well, welcome to the Redman TV. I'm Chris Pajak, and I am joined this week by Craig Austin, John Machin, and Jack Hart to preview the Liverpool Tottenham game. Now, you'd know that these fellas were with me if you subscribe to our website for just two pounds a month. Yes, just two pounds a month. But you're too stingy, and you didn't know, did you? So get on there, www.theredmentv.com, and subscribe. It's two pounds a month. Free Less than a pint. And it's free for a month. Jesus, look, man. It's free for a month. Just get on there and subscribe. If you don't like it, fuck it <laughs> off. And send me an email, Chris at com, and tell me why you didn't like it. And I'll change it just for you. Okay? Just for you. Anyway, right. Into Tottenham. Spurs look good. Didn't they? I mean, it's QBR. Oh, there's a positive to be drawn from that. Not that, but... Not to try away from Spurs, mate. It was probably the best performance in two or three years, to be honest. They did look really, really good, and Pochettino's you know, system and ethics seem to have just automatically got, gone into Spurs. And what was an outcast of a player who didn't look like he was going to play another game for Spurs? It suddenly looks like a world beater in Lamella. He was fucking outstanding on the weekend, and <laughs> I'm kind of gone from feeling really good about the game to actually a little bit worried about it, if, if I'm honest. But Listen, we can go there with, with no fear after what we've done to them last season. There's not to say we can't, we can't go there and do it again if we, if we play our game, but Spurs, they have started really well. Yeah. Is there something that, you know, when we first started, John under Rodgers, he was obviously instilling instil a new system. It took us a little while, didn't we? We had good games and we had bad games, and, and are we just hoping that Pochettino's Spurs are exactly the same and that it took off for them last week and he clicked, but. It's not easy at the beginning of instilling something like this in an ethos to keep that going. No, I think that's true, but I, I'm just hoping that we're better than them. <laughs> Simple as that, whether they've got a new system and it works or not. You know, we were much, much better than them last year. Um, and I'm hoping that the gap hasn't, you know, narrowed that much that we won't be able to beat them. What was um, it on aggregate nine 0 last year? Yeah, something like that. So if yeah. if it may be six 0 at the moment <laughs> on four of the aggregates. Oh, yeah. No, 6-2. Mm. I mean, there's no doubt that they've got players in that side who'll be desperate in front of their own fans to get revenge for what we did to them at uh, White Hart Lane last year. So that'll be an added edge, you know, for them. And they've got this new high-pressing system mm -hmm. that Pochettino's given them. Lamella's, you know, suddenly come good after being awful last year, as we said. Um, uh, uh, last year, they just floundered and they? they seemed to didn't know what to do with the players they'd bought. Um, and this season, I mean, Pochettino, give him his due. Whereas, you know, I'd like to Van Gaal saying, uh, it'll take a while to get you know, bed in and do all this. He said, oh no, I'm, yeah, you can judge me on results right away. You know, and sort of took responsibility for what the team do immediately. Uh, which I really think is um, really positive. And I think that's probably helped the team as well, to s see a manager with that kind of confidence. Well, it would, wouldn't it, Jack? It would make you confident that your manager believes in you and, and hasn't come out and said, oh, I'm going to watch you and then I'm going to go into the transfer market mm -hmm. like Lee Van Hal's done. Well, it, it, it shows as well, it shows supporters, it shows opposition players and supporters and staff, and it shows their players that he's got a lot of, a lot of confidence in himself and he'll, he'll you know, hold himself accountable for what's going on on the pitch and I think um, that's a good thing really where you know you see a lot of people deflecting blame in other other areas don't you so that's, that's a good thing I think um, I just hope that they suffer a little bit like um, Chelsea did under Vias Boas um, when you know tried to make a lot of changes and it was just a bit too much all at once um, I still tend to think although Pochettino's you know Look, looked in the last 18 months or so like a really good manager and he's done really good things changing Southampton um, I'm still a little bit confused as to why they got rid of Vias Boas in the first place I, I think they'd have been you know the expectations and the hopes for this season would have been pretty much exactly what they are right now had they kept him on had that full season with those players who came in and you know had the summer to deal with any changes that need making so I, I don't I guess there's going to be a lot of optimism and, and hope around Spurs at the moment, but I can't help but think that, you know, looking at that situation from, situation from outside, I don't see how they're much better off, really, than they were this time last year. Well, that's, that's an interesting 
an interesting point there. I'd, I'd like to ask the viewers, actually, because we, we do have quite a lot of Tottenham fans. I can think of one because he just trolls us constantly, Tony Montana. But you'll be watching, won't you? And you'll be doing your same fucking classic line that you throw on every single one of our videos and every single one of Full Time Devils and every single one of Arsenal fan TV. So throw it on there and then answer this question. Are you better off with Pochettino as manager? Or would you have actually been happy to keep the Spurs at the club? Um, but anyway, back on back on to us. Sorry about that. I just I just wanted to talk to Tony Montana straight up. I, I I know yeah. I see you all the time. I just don't give you the time of day because it's pretty fucking bored of what you're doing. But anyway, I guess uh, the hope is that they're taking the hope. If you're a Spurs fan, is that they're taking. You know, maybe last season they took a step backwards to take now the two steps forward under Pochettino. But um, I, f- I felt the same thing about Sammy Hippie's dismissal as well at Leverkusen, and you know, towards the end of the season, does that not just Kind of put them on the back foot going into this new season. You know, same kind of, same kind of situation. I think. What I'm hoping is that although um, Southampton become a much better side, I think with Pochettino there, that eventually we we found them out. Yeah. You know, we 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 found a way to play. I mean, that we they beat us at um, their ground in the, at the end of the pre- previous season. season. Then they beat us at, at Anfield and. and it looked like they had the whammy over us, and they, you know, but somehow we've uh, turned that round and found them out. I'm hoping, therefore, when we play Tottenham, if they're playing the same kind of system, that we'll know how to play. No, I, I do. I, I really hope we do. Obviously, but um, one thing is that for me, last season Southampton were the best side that came to Anfield. I thought I thought they put us under a lot of pressure in that. Fit. It was early on in the season, wasn't it? And they beat us one 0 I thought they were brilliant on the Pochettino then. Southampton had a fantastic season, mate, didn't they? And a lot of it that was down to Pochettino and the, the kind of style of football he, he brought to the club. And he seems to have taken that to, to Spurs with him. And, and listen, he's a fantastic manager. There's no two ways about it. And he's proven that he can do it. And as you so, so, so said before, Van Al wants time and don't judge me on this. So Pochettino's gone and said, I'm good enough. Judge me on, on what happens in, in the immediate. And there's you were saying about the yes, well, sticking around and I think they are going to be a much better side under Pochettino in, in the long run it might not be immediate effect but in the long run I think Spurs will be a, a much better side under them yeah, Do you think Spurs being a better side can make a difference to what Spurs can achieve though? I do yeah because if he sticks around for any length of time Spurs have be been a, a, a club that's sack managers when it goes wrong in the, in the short term yeah. if they keep him around in the long term I don't see any reason why we're all talking now that it's not a big four anymore, it's a big six and a big seven. Mm-hmm. They'll be prolonged as a club in, in that, and I don't see any reason why they can't start taking steps up. It, it, it wasn't that long opinion. ago they were up there either, no. was it really, in fairness? You know, it was only a few years ago on the better. Yeah. Which, well, which again, though, is, is exactly the same. Right? What the hell did they get rid of him for? Because they, they took massive steps backwards when they got rid of Edna. It's insane, but anyway, like his eye off the ball, didn't he, during that spring, wanting yeah. that other job? Yes, yes, <laughs> that other job. <laughs> uh, right, the trivia question, you know you've all been waiting for it. Last season's mullering of spares was the first time since May 2008, sorry, I'll just repeat that, mullering of spares was the first time since 2008, no mullering of spares was the first time since 2008 that we'd taken any points in the league at White Hart Lane for five games when we beat them 2-0. Torres and Voronin were the scorers that day, Jesus. But can you name the only two players to feature in both games? Okay, I'll repeat that one more time. Last season, mullering of spares for the first time since May 2008 we'd taken eight points in the league at White Hart Lane. Torres and Voronin were the goal scorers that day, but can you name the only two players to feature in both games? Okay. Um, on to Liverpool now. Lovren and Skirtle got <sighs> ripped a little bit by Man City. Um, we've spoken on our subscriber shows at length about the partnerships and stuff, and that's on www.theredmontv.com. It's £2 a month. It's free for a month as well. So get on that if you want to hear more about that. But do you think that Lovren and Skirtle are the partnership to take Liverpool forward? I hope they are. Well, a lot of my, my worries and criticisms the back end of last season when things started to go tits up was the chopping and changing in the back four. I wanted to see a settled back four and a settled partnership at centre-half because I mean, you like takes a lot of shit. And it, my my personal opinion is he's so unsettled and looks so worried all the time because he's he's never had a settle back back through 
two centre halves in front of him and a settle back four. If he gets that, I think we'll see a lot more confidence come from him. And even the Man City game, he, he looked like he was a lot more confident coming for crosses and stuff because there seems to be an understanding, although they didn't have a great game and it's been highlighted a lot, but there's an understanding between Lovren and Skirtle already and I think that can only get better and only develop and the only way it's what happen is if they stay on the pitch together. So I'm, I'm hoping that for for the foreseeable future that that's the bit partnership we go with. Good. I think that's a, I think that's a great point. And on points and points to prove, John, who do you think after the City game for Liverpool has a point to prove? I think they probably all do, to be honest. I mean, you know, it's, it's nice to to dominate the game for most of the first half, but we never scored a goal. And it, it's that old cliche, isn't it? That when you're on top, you've got to take your chances and uh, make it count. Um, and then, of course, they capitulated, you know, badly in the second half. I mean, the three goals, they were all a bit dodgy, weren't they? Not, not all of them were preventable. Um, so I think that everyone's got something to prove. And um, I can't think of anyone who had said an outstanding game. And you know, I struggled to find a man of the match. You know, thank God no one's asked me, but. Uh, um, I think like Moreno's got something to prove because clearly, you know, he was at fault for the first goal, and people are saying that he's not at the pace of the game yet. But he's, you assume that he's going to be playing if he's fit, mm -hmm. uh, and he's going to be playing for the next few weeks. So he's got to get his act together. The two centre backs have had a lot of criticism. They've got to prove that they're a decent partnership, and I agree. I think they need to stay in and. You know, they need to have a good long run together so we can actually judge what they're like. Yeah. Johnson, I think he might have something to prove of his fit. Um, just all of the whole team, every single one of them. That's something. You can say Matt, if Mankio comes in for Johnson, then he's got, you know, he's got to prove that he's better than Johnson. And uh, the midfield uh, were, were awful for certainly the whole of that second half. And, they, and Gerard, where, where did he go? Don't I know think... I think the captain's the player that we all I want to see a big performance from. And that's not to, you know, put any blame on anyone's shoulders whatsoever for, you know, what is a better start comparatively than to the games last season. But I think um, a big performance from Gerard would be, you know, good to see. Because um, he dominated midfields in a lot of games last season. And um, and it's not quite looked like that in the you know, two ninety minutes we've seen so far. Well, here's a question for you then, Jack. If, if Johnson and Moreno are injured... What would you do with that back line? Um, doesn't seem to matter what we do, really, does it? Um, we'll still look a bit shaky at the back there. Um, who would I put in there? It, we've not got many options, really, have we? It'd be Henry Key and Mankeo. Yeah. It's an argument to go to the centre half at the back. Mm -hmm. That's what I'd do. Possibly, yeah. yeah. That's what I'd do. But then it's who do you play as the wing backs, then, I suppose. But, you know, we've seen that. Uh, We've seen that players can do a job there. Not not saying that I'd like to see Raheem Sterling there, but he can do it. It just seems if those two are injured, then I think he might go three at the back. I, I agree with you there. Craig. Yeah. What was you then? Given that he's not um, been playing Enrique, even though uh, we haven't had a left back, so he's been playing Johnson. So effectively, he, he can't fancy Enrique at the moment. He wasn't think he's fit. So that would be a really uh, big risk, I think, to play. And a big blow for us if both players are out injured, wouldn't they? Yeah. Hey, what would you do, Miss? Depending on fitness of players, I've, I think I've just said what I do. I'll go with, with the three centre halves, to be honest with me. And I was going to say Sterling in the wing pack position, although it takes a part of his game away from him. We, we've seen in previous games he can be effective there and he can do a job for us, and he doesn't mind digging in and putting shift in and working the line back and forth. So, if Moreno is to be out, then I'd go three at the back. Yeah, and if Ashley Young can play wing back, I'm damn sure Raheem Sterling can do that. He can't play wing back, though. He can't play wing back, can he? Well, he can we... catch bear poo in his mouth, at least. <laughs> I just um, I just worry a little bit about the midfield pairing if we play the three at the back, and I, I don't think it gives us. I don't think then we look at the midfield as an area where, you know, this is going to be somewhere we control the game and we're going to be in charge of this midfield area because I think it's, it, it probably removes Gerrard from doing what he does best which arguably is 
being effectively the third centre back. Yeah, I hope we hold the diamond. Yeah, and listen, we've talked for, for about five minutes now about Liverpool's deficiencies, but we're gonna have Mario Balotelli playing this game, aren't we? You know what I mean? Especially be shitting themselves about this strike force potentially. You know, we could potentially have Coutinho, Sterling, Balotelli, and Sturridge all on the pitch and all firing. Now that is something that you could scare Spurs fans, surely. Who have they played centre back in the two games so far? Vertonghen's been injured, hasn't he? I don't know if he came back for the last game. Vertonghen played against you, yeah. Uh, well, I've got Dawson supposedly on his way out, isn't he? So it'll be interesting to see who gets picked there. Go on then. I'll, give, I'll ask for some predictions then. You're going three at the back, John. What would you What would you think would happen? It just depends on who's first. If, if we don't have full backs, then you've got to go three at the back, haven't you? Mm -hmm. But if um, Moreno's fit, then I'd, you know, I'd like us to uh, stick with four at the back as usual. And uh, Diamond? Diamond, yeah. Who's at the top of it? I'd quite like to see Sterling there. Yeah. You know? I'm excited about that. That sounds good. Let's have a bit of that. Okay, score predictions then. Okay. We're going to bounce back and we're going to win 3 1. 3 1, John. 3 1 for me as well. Yeah, it's a hat trick. 3 1 as well. <laughs> something, something about this seat says I'm just going to sit on the fence. <laughs> <laughs> oh, splinter in my ass. Um, nah, fuck it. 3 1 as well. <laughs> Screw you, Tottenham. We're going to dick you with Balotelli in the face. You're going to love it. There's score. nothing you can do about it. He's going to get two goals against you and he's going to get his second assist in Premier League history. There you go. What was his first assist for one bonus point? Aguero! <laughs> Stop the manch winning the league. <laughs> love it. Anyway, this is why I love Mario Balotelli, man. He's, 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 he's a gift that keeps giving as well. Oh, I love it. Did you see the quotes that why don't you celebrate when you score? Because it's my job, you don't see a postman celebrate when he delivers a letter. <laughs> That's a fucking fucking <laughs> thing. He's just a fucking nutcase, man. He's absolutely superb. Right, trivia question and answer then. Um, last season's mullering of Spurs was the first time since 2008 that we've taken any points in the league at White Hart Lane when we beat them 2-0. Torres and Voronin was the goal scorers that day, but can you name the only two players to feature in both games? At this point, Paul normally goes around the room and asks the answer, but... Aussie here, Google, <laughs> in between the shows. So, I'm just going to go straight out there and say, Martin Skirtle and Lucas Lena. Skirtle started and finished both games, whereas Lucas was 78th minute sub for Dirk Counts in 2008 and came off in the 79th minute for Louis Alberto last season. So, that's the uh, uncensored match build-up for Tottenham versus Liverpool. As always, uh, what camera am I on at the moment? This one. Yeah. So where are we looking? Is this the subscribe button about here? I'm not really good at getting the subscribe button, as you probably know, but it's, it's somewhere over there anyway. In fact, I'm fucking editing this video. I'll put it where I fucking want. It's going to be here <laughs> for now. Um, so, comment in the video section below. Of course, we'll be up there for an hour to chatting to you after we've uploaded the video. Blah, 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 blah. Um, and don't forget to subscribe to the YouTube channel because it's absolutely fucking free. And then if you're feeling really good about yourself, go and give some money to ALS and then give us £2 a month to subscribe to the website, www.theredmentv.com. Anyway, that's me and Craig you and John much. and Jack. And we thank you for watching the Uncensored Mass Build Up Show. It looks as though Mario Balotelli, Chris, is a Liverpool player. I love the mad bastard. <laughs> <laughs> He's as mad as a box of frogs, but I absolutely love him. He is as bad as a bag of tits. I mean, oh, fucking right,